Welcome back, agents. We are at it again here with some more great fun here, coming straight from uh, our GIA headquarters here in our secret location. Can't tell you guys where it's at. We have a fun one today. We're, we're, we're bringing back here for the very first time in 2023 our tier list rating, and we have a special guest that is going to be joining us today, my very good friend, Jake from On Chain Gaming. What is going on, man? Hey, what's up? Glad to be here. Excited to, to rate some games in the new year. I think this is going to be a good one for crypto gaming. Yeah, yeah. So uh, somebody asked in chat, they said, so what is he going to be rating? Is it going to be all 50 plus Gala games? I said, yes, we got them all on the list. Let's go. Nice. Let's do it. Yeah, 54 games. <laughs> yeah, they we you know they they've made a you know some pretty big announcements here over you know the last couple of weeks, man. You know, before we jump in, how, how do you kind of just feel about what we've seen here uh, from Gala over the last week? Dude, it has been absolutely wild. I have not made this much content about Gala, I think, since like Galaverse in Malta, when I was literally there, like doing nine streams in a single day of like the live event. I think yeah. uh, yesterday uh, we posted five videos about like different announcements they made, like acquiring Ember Entertainment, mm -hmm. um, which brought their portfolio up to 52 games, added 20 million users. Uh, like the, the potential new users to their blockchain as like players who are already playing those mobile games. They're like, hey, if you want to mint one of your items on your game, you already like onto the blockchain, bam, all that is brand new users onto the blockchain, which is going to burn more gala. Really exciting. So then, yeah, so five, five videos, then four videos yesterday. And today I'm probably going to release like another three videos because we got more news. It's just been, yeah. it's been crazy. I feel you, man. I feel you. I just dropped one today. They kind of packed everything all into one video. I was like, I'm just going to do one big recap. I gave all my <laughs> thoughts. If you guys have not uh, gone and watched it, make sure you go check it out. Because uh, there's some things there, There's some things that I was a little curious about that they didn't talk about. One of those things being, you know, okay, we have these new users, 20 million plus users that are coming from this game studio. And yeah, the games are going to use Gala for gas. How are the existing users going to get that Gala to pay for the gas? They yeah, I mean, I'm I'm guessing that they're gonna have to buy some, maybe, or give it to them for free, maybe. Like, I don't know, man. You know, like, I mean, something like, so I guess they could do know? that because they are going to be giving users of these current mobile games like free NFTs, right, as yeah. a way to onboard yep. them onto the blockchain. Yep. So if you're gonna give them like free valuable NFTs, um, then. I guess you could give them a little bit of Gala too, or maybe they're they're like, well, I guess I could sell this NFT, and now I got my first you know year of uh, block transactions paid for or something. I can't I can't imagine that the gas fee is going to be that insane. I no, think it's going to no, be no. something like a small percentage of the transaction amount. So it's like, yeah, if it's like one percent or something, it's like, all right, if I'm transferring a hundred dollars, like a dollar doesn't seem like that big of a deal, but. Yeah, if you're, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I, it, that, that is a good question, though. Uh, I, it's going to be interesting to see how they deal with that, because definitely that's one of the, the biggest, I think, onboarding issues with stuff like wax. Right. It's like yeah. in order to create a wax wallet, you have to have wax. have some wax first. Right. Yeah. And that is like was a massive barrier for me. Like I didn't set up my wax wallet for so long just because I needed to already have wax before I could make my wax wallet, which seemed so silly to me. I'm like, I'm not doing it. But yeah, well, Gala can run into that same issue. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, that was actually a, a very recent change here they made within like the last year for the first, you know, five years or so, all the wallets were free on wax. And there's still some places like some companies like Atomic a Hub that allow you to create wallets for free. They essentially cover the cost of that. But like they gate it and there's only so many they can give out per day and something like that. So mm -hmm. you can still get a free wax wallet. But yeah, I mean, you're right. That That is a barrier to entry. And it was something I didn't like about, uh, you know, the changes they made there. And so I'm just curious of what we'll see here with Gala. But we are not here just to discuss Gala. We're going to talk about some Gala games. We're going to rate some Gala games today. But we want to we want to jump into this and get going on this tier list and show you guys exactly how many games we're going to be rating today and uh, talk a little bit about that. So here we are with our list. Uh, we're going to throw it down. And, um, you know, just before we start, so you guys know, 
no games uh that, that you see here on this list paid to be here and we try i tried to pick all games that were playable in some sort of state whether it's like closed alpha or a beta or something like that uh these are all games that, that you know I, i've been able to play and i know jake's been able to play quite a bit of these as well uh and so we're gonna we're gonna get his tier list ranking for these games we're, we're rating everything from s tier to wrecked right so obviously s tier godlike tier right wrecked what games just aren't going to make it and uh you know we're, we're gonna we're gonna dive right into this and and just kind of bounce around a little bit here and see what uh, what jake thinks and hey and guys in chat i want to hear your thoughts as well so as we hit these games each one of these games let me know what where you would rank it you know, give us an S, give us a, uh, give us an A or, or, or a wrecked and let me know in chat. I want to hear you guys, uh, your, your, your thoughts out there. And a uh, big shout out to our, our, um, our senior agents in chat, Agent Spy Pierce and Agent Savage Santi. Thanks for joining us. Uh, but let's, without further ado, let's get to it. I'm trying to decide how, how toxic I want to be here. Do I want to, do I want to, do I want to make some noise? Do I want to make some noise and just let's like, full noise here. It's super disrespectful? Jake. <laughs> zero, zero Fs are given. I, I'm, I'm going like full brutal stash this year. I was very kind last year, but this year I am not holding back, my friend. And I would love to see you just, uh, you know, give us your honest opinion here. So let's start out as we always do. We're just going to ping pong back and forth here. So front to back. And we're, but we're going to start with the big one. Axie Infinity. Where do you rank Axie Infinity? All right, all right. Well, let, let, let's start off by saying that that all of these ratings are going to be stream of consciousness based off of my current opinions of the current playable state of these games. Yes. It does not mean this is still my opinion. If developers make huge changes, if we start to see things like a lot of community games launch that are super fun, like things can change in the future. So this is just based off of currently now, I would put Axie in D. Go in D. All right. He puts yeah. this, I, like I was like this I long was, disclaimer. I was a little bit tempted to even put it in wrecked, but I'm not going to put a game in wrecked until the developers themselves have given up on it. So okay. as long okay. as the developers themselves still believe in what they're working on, that it's not wrecked yet. Once the okay. developers themselves give up, then it's completely wrecked. There's no hope. I can. And, and, yeah. I can feel that. Yeah, I can feel that. I mean, you know, uh, I think that, you know, I, 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 we've talked about Axie quite a bit on the channel, you know, and uh, I'm not happy with a lot of things that happen that I would also probably put them in D or in Wrecked at this point. But I will say, you know, to their, 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 you know, kind of defense, as it were, they did finally get some land gameplay out and they have some sort of things going on. Is that, does that mean I forgive them for everything that, that, that's happened in the past? No. Yeah, I think... <laughs> The the most promising thing that I've seen so far is that SLP is now deflationary instead of inflationary. Yeah. yeah. Um, which if they want a sustainable economy, that was something that needed to happen. But right. I still do not have faith that that is because uh, the economy is actually balanced and it's not because just no one's playing. And right, there's just yeah. so much SLP already out there. People are like, ah, sure, I'll burn it to try out this stuff. But I don't yeah. know. Part of the reason why I have this in D and was even tempted to put it in wrecked instead of C or B or something because I mean this was the big crypto game that started making all like started bringing a lot of users into all of the YouTube channels that that cover crypto gaming and we have to give them so some many. props for that like they broke into the public conscience yeah. and kind of started becoming popular but they did it with an economy that wasn't ready for it that was mm -hmm. built like a pyramid mm -hmm. scheme wasn't sustainable and was going to end up leaving everyone wrecked in the end yeah. so it's like how much credit how much credit could you actually give them but part of the reason why even now it's still not a C or B despite what they've done, maybe what they've done for the crypto gaming space in the past, is that I ran a poll asking if Axie Land gameplay was fun, because I would just, complete disclosure, I haven't played Axie Land gameplay yet. I haven't tried it. I haven't yeah, even yeah. been tempted to, to be completely honest. Um, and part of the reason is because I made a poll, and like 60 plus percent of people said that it wasn't fun who had, oh, who had wow. played. That's so, surprising. So, yeah, maybe it's just like early development and people are just being really harsh because they got burned, right? Like you lose a yeah. lot of money in a game and you're uh, you're going to probably be inclined to be negative. You're it. like, all right, let's but, fight. Suckers. 
but yeah, that's the that's the that's the sentiment of my users, uh, of of my viewers. So if sixty percent of them don't think it's fun, and then also I've been following Elijah's channel, um, who is one of the biggest Axie channels, Axie exclusive channels, and he's been making videos about how uh, the new Axie game just isn't as fun, it isn't as competitive as the last mm -hmm. one was, and there's a lot of work that needs to be done on it, and people just aren't liking it as much. And that's really crazy considering how basic the, the first Axie game was. So it's like yeah. if, the if the second one is like currently in its current state, what's this like season two or season three or something way worse. I mean, sure. Give them another seven seasons to try to balance this. It does take time to balance like really competitive games. But I don't know. All the signs are pointing towards other games having an opportunity to take a lot of market share here uh, without even thinking about Axie. Yep, you make some great points there, man. I would agree with you pretty much 100%. A little surprised to hear that, you know, your your fans, people that, you know, rated this or, or you know, was participating in this poll, you know, 60% said it wasn't fun. I mean, you're, you're one of the YouTubers who was really big into Axie, you know? And, you know, like you said, a lot of people have really, you know, made their mark with Axie. Bryson, the same way, you know, it was all Axie content. And I was never a big fan of Axie. I, 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 you know, I was never the big fan. I didn't play it a lot on the channel and there was reasons for that. But, um, you know, but I, I, a hundred percent agree with, with your, your take here on Axie Infinity. Yeah, no, still today, Axie, our most, most viewed video is how to play Axie with like 700,000 yes. views and yeah. nothing, nothing else has come close to that except for like a town start tutorial. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to find this poll for you so I can, so I can show it off, but. <laughs> We can move on to the next game. All I right, all right. Fine. Let's move on to the next game. So this is one that, uh, that I know that you've played for sure. This is a gala game, The Walking Dead Empires. Where do you rate The Walking Dead Empires? Uh, I think The Walking Dead Empires has a lot of potential. So when I rate the fun of these crypto games, well, so, okay. You can't rate a crypto game just based off the fun, though. You have to also rate it based off of the economy. So... Here, just st stop moving that around for a second. I, got, I gotta, I gotta, we gotta just make this a little easier here. I am crossing off the entire S tier. I am not putting a single game in S tier okay. until it has had a sustainable economy for at least five years. That means Ooh. full. the economy has been fully live. There, everything is live. The bridges are live. All the tokens are live. It's like mm -hmm. fully in the wild for at least five years and nothing has collapsed. Then it then it has the chance. It's unlocked the eligibility to be an S tier. So that okay. means none of these games are going to no get S tier. No S tier. No right. S tier. No nothing S -tier. hit. Nothing in that big top tier. All right, let's go. All right. So now that S tier is gone, I'll, <laughs> I'm going to put the Walking Dead Empires in A tier, um, which Morning. is the highest I'll put any game, and that's just based on quality of developers, how fun it's been, and then the fact that they're part of the Gallo ecosystem gives me faith on the third thing. So developer quality game how fun it is and then the third thing is the economy because they're a part of the gala ecosystem and gala has been learning a lot about how to try and build economies i yeah. have faith that even if the first version isn't perfect they're gonna get the economy side worked out um in the end as as well uh maybe i have too much too much faith in gala there but i just feel like they have a lot of smart people there they have full-time economists on the team which a lot of games do not have Right. Um, and if anyone's going to work it out, if anyone's going to figure it out, it's going to be it's going to be the Gala team and, and and the games that are launching on that platform. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. I like Walking Dead Empires, man. I, I'm a big Walking Dead fan, so it's like when I saw that come up, I was like, oh man, this is going to be great. Base building, zombies, just you know, uh, you know, straightforward fun, not not super mm -hmm. complicated. Uh, I actually really enjoyed the the play test and stuff we've done here in the past, and uh, I, I would agree. I think it's a, it's it's a really good game that. Obviously, it's coming from Ember Entertainment, which was mm -hmm. the game, they, the studio that they, you know, Gal has acquired. Mm -hmm. I would say probably, you know, just looking at it and kind of, I haven't played the other games from Ember, but looking at the other games, I would say that that's definitely the best game that they have uh, in their their mobile roster. Yeah, uh, in, I was, in my opinion. I was looking. They have some games with like four point six, four point seven out of five stars on the App Store, like ten thousand ratings. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, like like pretty solid. Um, but nothing, nothing that that was like super viral, like no Candy Crush, right? But I mean, yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. something that just is like massive, right? Right. All right, let's move on. Next one up, Big Time. Have you played Big Time? Uh, yeah, I've played a little bit of Big Time. I haven't played um, super recently, mm -hmm. uh, but it, it was fun. I do love how they're setting up the economy. Um, I think that they have a lot of great developers and there's a good chance here. So I'll put this one in A tier as well. One A? Um, okay. Yeah. I, 
I, I think out of all the the kind of RPG focused games we're seeing, they're they're definitely one of the better ones. You know, uh, they need some more content, and we're seeing some more updates for their economy and some expansion coming here. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, but but in general, I, I think that there's a lot. You know, there's a lot there. There's a lot to to work right. But the the only thing I miss is like you know, okay, guys, you showed us a, a, a Western cowboy riding on a freaking dinosaur. When when can I do that? When can I be rolling around with my with my you know my Western disguise on you know Sheriff Stash, right, and, and w- mounted on a freaking T Rex? That's all I yeah. want. Yeah, yeah, I, I, that's in, true. In we space. need we need more of that variety. Like, where does the time travel side like right. really start to feel like right. it's a big part of it? Yeah, that yeah. that side's definitely missing. Um, yeah. And like when I'm putting these games in A tier. That does not mean they're going to succeed, guys. Like, that just means right now in the current All financial state advice, of guys, development. Jake, Jake, yeah, no, Jake's giving financial advice right now. Hold it to him. <laughs> in the Hold current it. state of development, the ones I'm putting in A tier are, like, the, the ones that I'm the most optimistic have a chance to, like, break into the mainstream, to, mm-hmm. to, to move crypto gaming towards that, that like, mainstream pastime. Um, yeah. 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 I feel it. I feel it. All right, all right. Moving quite, move it along, moving along here. Um, you know, speaking of of zombies, hell and zombies. What do you think about undead blocks? A lot, lot of updates recently. Um. So yeah, I actually have only seen gameplay footage of this. I haven't mm-hmm. actually played it. Um. And I also don't know that much about the the development team behind it. So you want to tell me, like, do you know uh, who's developing this and what they've made before? So new development team, yeah, uh, not not a team who has you know prior experience developing stuff, and yeah, then uh, I'm gonna put it in D tier, <laughs> just me? based off of that. <laughs> <laughs> Prove yourself. Well, you know, hey, that, he's... hey uh, you're not wrecked, right? If you if the yeah. developers, as inexperienced as they are. Still believe in their project and continue working on it. They're not wrecked yet, but yeah, they have to prove themselves to me. So yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I I, I would kind of agree there. I personally would probably rank Undead Blocks a little bit higher. I think it has, you know, like when you talk about some of the the straightforward games out there in comparison to a lot of what we're seeing with like closed beta games and like that, they have a pretty good game loop, right? So you go in, boom, hit it. You're just killing zombies, you know, and uh, you know they've they're they just released multiplayer, which is you know kind of nice. They're going to release their earnings stuff. They, they really like waited to kind of scale in the, the full earnings, really looking at how the best way is to incorporate that. And, uh, you know, just recently here partnered, uh, you know, with with uh, was it was a polygon or immutable. One of the two. Damn it. I think it's polygon, but no, maybe it's immutable. It's me. It, I think it's immutable. Uh, but anyways, yeah. So but I, I think a fun game, you know, l- limited in what it can do. Right. When you talk about like, OK, what, what's the competition? You know, kind of like a Call of Duties, Black Ops, like zombie style. Right. You know, and, and it has that feel to it. Uh, but if you like just mowing down zombies, it, it is a lot of fun, actually. Yeah, I'm just I'm just thinking like. Is an inexperienced game team now th- this is possible just because they're inexperienced doesn't mean they can't do this, but is are they likely to create some just like game experience or game loop or mechanic that's just so addictive that like people right. are telling their friends about about it and like actually getting like right. a bunch of like peer to peer growth um or is it a team like i feel like most of these teams that are making first time games in the crypto space are from the crypto side of it and they're yes. just like oh we can make a lot of money with this and maybe we could figure out how to make a game and yeah. it's i feel like competing against an industry that started with Steve Jobs back at Atari like with, <laughs> when we were in our diapers like you're not going to make a first time game and compete with that industry so yeah it is hard there's a lot i mean just there's a lot of competition in gaming in general so whether you're making a web3 enabled game or you're just making a, an indie title there's just so much competition there's so much out there you know you really you're right you have to come with something unique just adding, you know, some Web3 elements is not enough to say, oh, look, this is what we're doing different. Like, yeah, that's cool. That's great. We want that. But it's also got to bring something that, you know, really attracts people. You know, they, they do a great job with their tournaments. So I, th- I think then we talk about kind of like esports focus. They do a pretty good job with getting yeah. those together and getting some good but, sponsors. I mean, even Epic Games, their first their first version of Fortnite was an absolute failure. No one yeah. played it. And it wasn't yeah, until they created the spoof multiplayer version of it yeah. that it started to catch on. And it's like you can even be an incredible developer that is like top tier, can make all of your ideas a reality mm-hmm. in a smooth way for the player. And it could still just fail, fail, fail. Like yeah. making something that works is so hard. And yeah. like that that actually a lot of people want to play is so difficult. So 
It's like, I, I almost feel like our job stash as content creators here isn't even to pick the winners. It's to help promote and give everyone a fair shot who's actually trying their right. best to create good experiences for gamers. And then whatever wins, wins. And we just grab onto that rocket ship and keep making content about it. <laughs> and that, that works. Like, that's it. That's the whole it's game true. plan. No, it's true, man. I mean, be, being a variety streamer, which is what I would consider all of us really here, you know, is, is you know, that that's what you do. I put a spotlight on projects that I think, you know, have a shot or doing something interesting or cool, you know, and uh, I don't know exactly who's going to be a long term winner if any of them are going to be, you know, in gaming. That's a hard thing to predict outside of Web3 or in Web3. Yeah. So I'm, I'm right there with you, man. I like to just kind of put a spotlight on, on, on cool things. And, and yeah, I mean, when, when we see people really starting to, to do well support them as much as we can and 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 keep on you know rolling with it keep keep uh you know hold on to those rocket ship uh fins and just keep ro blasting off yeah, blasting yeah. off all right, all right let, let's moon. go let's go to a game that's been around for uh, quite some time uh pretty polished really about blankos blankos block party yeah they've been going through some 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 problems recently actually you saw that they lost uh three of their top executives um mm. they all left to start like phoenix nine or something uh they're now investing like a hundred million dollars, um, and then Blanco sued those executives mm -hmm. as taking uh, knowledge they learned while working at Blanco's to raise money for something different. Uh, then I think Blanco's laid off ten percent of their staff, and then has there been even a new development since then uh, over Christmas? Um, in, in in that side of things, I don't know, but I mean, they definitely have you know new in game stuff for sure. Yeah, so the the in the game itself is progressing well, and I think that it does give some fun. Here's the issue uh, with Blanco's Block Party, and this is just being completely real. My demographic on YouTube only one point eight percent of my viewers are under eighteen years old. Blanco's mm -hmm. is a game targeted at under 18 years old. So there is a massive demographic mess up that happened here where everyone who's in crypto gaming right now, and I don't think it's going to stay this way. I think that Blankos might just be here a little too soon before crypto <laughs> gaming has like broken into like normal everyday gamers. But right now, people who are, are thinking about crypto games, they are age 18 to 50 age 18 mm -hmm. to yeah. 50. Yeah, Blankos is more like a Roblox-esque, I sure. think, target demographic. And that demographic right now is not paying attention to crypto games at all. That target mm -hmm. demographic like doesn't have a grasp of like what money even is or why adding real ownership into video games, like how that's even different from a normal <laughs> game now. It's like, yeah. So I, I think the game is is interesting and and they're working well on it but i don't know if it's gonna make it so i'll put it c tier okay okay yeah you know i i kind of agree with you with with kind of the the direction and you know what where they position it now what i will say is something i hear quite often from from people that are you know follow my channel in my community is that they love playing blancos with their kids so there's a lot of like you know people that that are of that upper age like you were saying and they have kids and this is when, when they say hey stash you know, I want to play one of these cool, you know, games, one of these Web3 NFT games. What What is the one I could play with my kids? And I always recommend Blanco's because it is mm. easy for, you know, kids to get in, on board and play with their parents. Uh, and, you know, I, I play Roblox with my daughter as well, you know. And, and so I think that that's uh, one of the reasons why I like it. But I, I agree with you, your, your, your take here. I agree. Yeah, they, they have to pitch it to the younger generation without a mention of crypto or blockchain yeah. at all. Yeah. Now, the yeah, nice thing perfect. is you can play the game without setting up a wallet and everything. So the onboarding yeah. is freaking easy. It's easy, so super They're easy. doing a lot of stuff really, really well. And mm -hmm. I do think, like, the game is fun. Yeah. Like, if if I had a, a seven-year-old kid, I'm sure they would play it every day and love it. Like, yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, I feel you, man. I feel you. All right, moving on. Townstar. 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 Okay, so what, Townstar what, what is the original hard to rate games. To rate. But, Town is, you know. is hard to rate. So. I know. Um, for those of you guys who don't know what's been going on with Townstar, uh, I think it was about four months ago, they completely stopped the daily earnings potential. Mm -hmm. They like ended town payouts for Townstar and they decided to change how the game was running 
from being client side authoritative to server side authoritative, which pretty much just means they decided to change it so that anyone who wanted to cheat in the game could just change any of the stats on their own computer and it would actually change in the game. So like mm -hmm. cheating was, it was like a free for all cheat fest. And they decided, hmm, for a crypto game, it's probably better if it's hard for people to cheat. So this yeah. was a this was a very necessary change. But because of this change that they've they've been making, play to earn as far as like a daily thing has gone, has been disabled for four months. Plus, yeah. we got the news like two days ago Just or two, something yeah. that the town coin is getting deleted. They're they're canceling oh. town coin. So Townstar's earning coin is now non-existent. It's gonna the conversion rate is two town for one gala, yeah. and then town players are gonna start earning gala, I guess. Yeah, so, in their nodes, in their nodes too. Yeah, so so this is very very interesting. Now, what gives me a lot of faith about Townstar is that it was created by um, the person who's developing Mirandus, Michael McCarthy, who also created Farmville Two, which had like thirty million monthly players. And currently, the person running Townstar is Mark Skaggs, who was instrumental in Farmville 1, which yeah. had 80 million monthly players. So I think that, like, the viral experience of the developers behind Townstar means that they know something about putting together game mechanics that feel good to people and are easy enough to go mainstream. So I don't know. They they understand something about, about human psychology. So that gives sure. me some, sure. some faith there. Um, I think the rating? game itself is fun. So I'll put it in B. I'll put it in B. Go in B? Okay. Yeah. Bold, bold move, Cotton. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I would probably put the, at, at the point where it's at right now, I would probably be putting this in, in a D or possibly even a rec tier. I, I think, yeah, and, and, you can... wait, hold on, here, let me, let me okay, tell you why. Ahead. Let me tell you why. And here's why. Okay. Yes. The, the, the people behind it have massive experience, but I think that this is one of the biggest mistakes by Gala uh, early on. And I, I don't know that they, they're going to really be able to recover the game to uh, to a degree that is really going to make it a hit game. That is going to put it and stand apart from other town start. You know, I mean, farming style games, right? I, I, I do feel like that genre was is a genre a little bit of the past. We'll see, and I don't know that there's going to be enough changes to Town Star with the next iteration that's going to make it fun enough for people to want to continue to invest in it. Best okay. Time. So here, here's where I think that's a good point. I do think that's a good point. But here's what, the evidence that makes me question that idea that Townstar is not going to break into the mainstream, besides the developers, because obviously no one cares who the developers are, even if they've had success in the past. But <laughs> of really every disgusting. single crypto game I have ever made a how to play tutorial on, no video has gone as viral and had as much interest on YouTube Mm -hmm. compared to Axie Infinity than the Townstar tutorial. So the, the Axie Infinity... They want, the money. Axie, huh? they want the monies, Jake. They just care about how do I get the most monies? Maybe, maybe, <laughs> but I think people actually like playing it. Like the... the like so that so the townstar how to play has 700k views my town i'm sorry the axie one has 700k mm. views the townstar one has almost as much at oh, like 500 and something thousand views people who have looked up how to play townstar so that is like way more interest than i have seen for any other crypto game besides yeah, yeah. axie infinity sure so that's all gives wrong me, i mean you know yeah they might be all <laughs> wrong but like if i'm seeing that that's where people have like they're showing some interest in this yeah yeah, yeah. um th then i think yeah that as long as as long as the developers are going to keep working on this they're about to reintroduce play to earn in february like the full relaunch of the game you're going to yeah. be able to look at other people's towns which means yeah. skins and stuff are going to start mattering the social yeah. game is going to start unlocking which is really big for farmville um so yeah. it could be massive for town star i i think that also as gala starts like pulling in more of a social aspect they've like I, I think they've already shown they want to do that social stuff with zanga with words with friends and stuff yeah. like yeah, yeah. the the ceo of of gala games knows how to bring that social aspect together so i don't know i i think you might i think counselor might surprise to the upside it's simple enough it could be i the mean it's, people... it's not my side I'll, I'll say right now it's not my style of game I'm, I'm not a big fan of the farming type of games and you know sure. even with all the social i mean it's not my style of game i you, you could be right you're right i mean like revamping if they really do a good job revamping the whole thing it, we could see a comeback 
I mean, you know, at this point, you know, I, I would still, I would still say like, I, I'm not super confident. I'm, and, and that doesn't mean I'm not confident in what Gal is doing overall. I think they're doing an amazing job, but I do feel like Townstar and possibly Mirandis may have been kind of early mistakes by Gala uh, in, in the in a time where they were trying to be a game development studio first and and really didn't hit their stride with what they are now and now I see them as a game publisher which I think they're doing an amazing job at and so we'll, we'll talk about Miranda's here in, in a second but uh but yeah that, that's I mean, yeah I, that's how I feel yeah no I think so that's I, fair let, let's let's move on here to the next game uh this one I don't know if you played but uh, we're playing it tomorrow actually on stream it's for for our 100th mission for Secret Agent Stash and it's Champions Ascension have you played Champions Ascension or have you? Yeah, have you looked at I actually, I just did a live stream of Champions Ascension. Um, and I have a full overview video of their entire white paper probably coming out uh, next week on Champions Ascension because they're doing their elemental champion drop yeah. uh, on the 23rd of January. Um, I think this looks interesting. So funny story, the CEO of Jam City and the CEO of Gala Games actually worked together founding myspace <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which which is uh pretty yep. crazy um so yeah i guess this is probably a, a b tier maybe a tier um let me see i'm looking at all the other games trying to see how full a tier is gonna gonna be you don't know don't worry about fullness just you know okay okay i think i think i think we could put this one in in a tier i think this is a okay. high quality attempt uh, th like I said before, A tier doesn't mean it's going to succeed, but I think this is as high a quality attempt at a at a massive blockchain metaverse as as any of them. So yeah, okay, I'm rooting I, for it. I would agree, man. I I played Champions Ascension. Uh, you know, their their multiple iterations. I played you know when they didn't have any of the arena match and you just had mini games. And I thought like they did a really great job of having something early for people to play who, who had invested and who want to get in early. And then when they launched their arena, you know, battle, I was on there the first, you know, the first week or so getting in that. And it, and it's actually fun. I actually, mm -hmm. I kind of, I enjoy it, man. I, I'm playing, it's competitive. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're going to play it tomorrow on stream. And, and we got a bunch of Champions Ascension giveaways, NFTs. And we're also going to be giving away some, some whitelist spots if you beat me. So if you beat me, you're going to be able to get some tickets and some spots here for the upcoming mint that uh, Jake was just uh, mentioning there. So make sure you guys awesome. check it out. Sounds uh, like a good time. Yeah, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. So I would agree. I think I think definitely, uh, you know, A tier for me as well. All right. All right. Moving on. What do you think about uh, Thetan Arena? I don't know if you played this game. It's, you know, it's, it's been I, I didn't play that one. Yeah, I saw all the buzz that was going on about Thetan Arena. And I don't know. Something just made me avoid it. But that said, I don't think I can rate this one. I don't think I. I don't. No, I don't you gotta rate pretend, it. I don't want to pretend to be an expert on a game that I really don't know that much about. So well, this is. I like, mean, we, we is... know you're not the expert. We know you're not an expert, but you still gotta give it. You, you've seen something. You gotta give it a rating based upon what you what you've seen, what you've done. I don't know. I'm just. I'm gonna see like. We're gonna put it in rec then. I can't. I can't put it in rec because I like literally just don't even know what the developers are thinking right now. Like I haven't yeah. talked to any Thetan Arena developers. Um, I have. I have no idea what any of the stats or anything are like. What any of their experience is like. What mm -hmm. any of their goals are like. What their funding is. Uh, I don't even know how their economy is like set up. So I don't know yeah. if it if it has a chance Economy's of being healthy, me. sustainable. <laughs> yeah. I. I. I, th I have to. I just can't. I can't rate this one. I'm incapable. You, you, you got you got to put it here. We can't leave it here. Data corruption, output unknown error. <laughs> error. <laughs> we got we got to put it somewhere. You got you got you got to make All right, a decision. If you're gonna on force it. me, I'll just put it in, in D tier because I'm right, going D. All right, fair enough. Fair enough. So, so just to let you kind of know where I stand on on Thetan, yeah, when it first came out, sure. you know, I I jumped in and and you know it, they the economy they just totally screwed up i mean from the get-go it was not good it, it totally wrecked everybody now the gameplay itself if you take the if you take all the web 3 elements out of it and you uh -huh. just play the game like it's not bad you know it's it's a straightforward moba right you know nothing super special about it uh straightforward moba you know a lot of people enjoy playing it i think but uh but yeah as far as the nfts and, and the the web 3 stuff definitely not um definitely not in a good position and I, I haven't really, you know, checked back on them here in the last couple of months. But, uh, but yeah, so I, I think I think D is actually probably, D or Rect is probably a fair evaluation here.
by by Mr. Uh, Jake from all right, let's move on to some uh, to some games here that uh, I know that you've you've definitely played. Uh, what do you think about Grit? Grit has a lot of potential. It's super fun. It is probably the most fun crypto battle royale I've played so far. But that said, it's very glitchy. <laughs> there, yeah. there yeah. are a lot of rough edges. Yep. And yep. I think that the game's like long-term mainstream success, a, a successful launch is going to rely on like how how smooth can they make this experience before before it actually launches for everyone. Um, I think this is one of those things just because battle royale is such a popular genre, mm. and I think that the the Wild West take and riding horses and stuff is just yeah. novel enough. This is this is something a lot of people are gonna check out i think a lot of normal gamers are down to check this one out so mm -hmm. that is why i'm optimistic i hope i hope they can make it really smooth and like show a good face for for crypto gaming uh but but we'll see we'll see um right, i'm gonna where are we putting it i'm gonna put this one oh man i want to put it in a but i'm gonna put it in b until until it's smoother okay yeah I would agree. I, I I like grit. I you know I think that you know someone in chat says it has like early PUBG vibes. I agree. Uh, you know mm -hmm. I, I think it needs more polish. There are I've played it in multiple uh, you know play tests and there's it, it feels clunky a little still. You know there, there's things they need to work out. It, it it does feel very very beta, but I do love the Western genre, man. I'm a big fan of that, and I think you're mm -hmm. right. I think you know because of that, people will probably still want to check it out. And I think that it could have some sex success. So I, I would agree. I, I might put it in C at this point, uh, personally, but I think that B is a fair evaluation. Yeah, the, the, I can't. I can't put it in the same tier as as Blankos, just because I think the chance of of just like mainstream adoption mm -hmm. is like probably an order of magnitude yeah. larger at this sure. point. So, all right, moving on, moving on. Superior. What do you think about Superior? Another gala game here. Superior is really fun. I think Superior might be a situation similar to Fortnite, where the developers are making this super cool single player game that's just a blast to run through the levels and level up your character. Yep, yep. Um, but I Rogue think light. until we see multiplayer, like multiplayer might be what actually makes a lot of people super interested in Superior. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's a solid game. I think the art style is super cool. Yeah. I think if you've ever played it, the the commentary is hilarious. Yeah, it's funny, um, man. <laughs> the gameplay is so fun. This definitely goes A tier. Yeah, I'd agree, man. Superior, you know, out, out of all the games last year that, you know, really launched, launched. You know, we're not talking mm -hmm. about games that are in, like, closed states. But this one launched on Epic Games. You can get to it. You can play it. Um, and uh, I, I really enjoy Superior, man. I think that it, it, it really did a great job with all the elements. The, the, you know, the actual look of the game is unique and cool. The gameplay mm -hmm. itself is fun and addicting. Uh, it has some great comedy elements to it. Like, I, you know, I, I can't wait to hear what the robot bartender has to say today kind uh -huh. of thing, you know? Yeah, yeah, I, I think yeah. you're right, though. I think that they're, they're on to something. I like the roguelite type of elements for it. Uh, but I think that, yeah, maybe like something like multiplayer could make it you know very interesting and take it in a new direction that maybe even the developers weren't really thinking from the get-go so I, I you're right i think they have something there mm -hmm. maybe they just need to massage that shit a little bit like a little bit over here a little bit over that way you know yeah. and so so i agree with you man i think i think it's yeah, uh, really yeah. Solid. play around with the game modes until you find something that people just like really seem to fall in love with or yeah. something a lot of games have done allow for for cust for the gamers to create custom game modes and that is when you can really start to have some just like brand new breakout game. Like I literally play StarCraft II more often now to play the arcade games that play that users have made than to actually play StarCraft II. Yeah. Like because just all, all the weekend I'm like, man, I just I want to play some like there's this like massive battle like you just build an army and they just go head to head in like a right. tug of war in StarCraft II. And some weekends I just hop on and play that for 45 minutes. <laughs> Yeah, and to clarify, everyone who's like superior is multiplayer. Yeah, it is multiplayer. You're going in with like it's like a co, but it's co-op. Yeah, yeah. I think player what versus me environment, like mass multiplayer. Player versus player is yeah. the difference we're talking yes, about. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So right now, we, you know, we have co-op modes. Uh, you know, I still see a lot of people going and doing single runs. Like I like doing you know solo runs, which are great too. Uh, but yeah, I, th I think that what we mean by multiplayer is mass multiplayer versus it being you know just a team of three. So I would love to see that too. I think that'd be kind of. 
All right, all right, all right. Uh, here, here's one of the OGs. This is one of the first solid oh, games wait, I just, that. Sorry, yeah. I don't, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I just had a great idea for a game mode they should try for Superior. All right, let's let's hear it, man. And, I want to hear it. And, and so, just like Last Expedition, have you played Last Expedition? I don't. Bro, think it's we 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 here. played on the play oh, test no, together. Are you kidding me? Oh yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. We won every match. Literally, the evidence is on YouTube. I remember that. <laughs> I totally remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we had a lot of fun there. What if they did Superior like Class Expedition, where they put multiple teams into a map? You're st it's still mm -hmm. mostly player versus environment, but if you see another team, then you can die to them. So both yeah. teams are trying to complete the mission. They might be trying to Get complete the, juice, the same yeah. mission, uh -huh. and you just add the the extra element that makes like making it to further rounds that much harder because like yeah. you make it eight rounds deep into this that means you've survived a lot of human uh team interactions as well that could be a spice that just really yeah. brings superior alive no that's interesting yeah that's interesting you know direction too because you talk about well, well how do how do battle royales work right now you know they're they're like a bunch of players on a map but you could have like two or three teams and that could be a really great way of saying okay well who you know who successively moves on maybe you know two teams made it and one didn't or whatever maybe and, and those keep going on through kind of a successive kind of uh, uh you know campaign uh mm -hmm. i think that'd be kind of interesting i would love to see some yeah all right moving on like i said so what one of the ogs in the space gods unchained I don't know yes. that you're. I don't. I don't know that you've played a lot of Gods Unchained, but uh, what do you think? I have about played it? some. I have played yeah. some. Um, I think that it is a solid attempt, especially being so early. A solid attempt at a at a crypto card game. They got something out that has surprise. It's surprisingly smooth and has surprisingly just like clean animations and stuff for something that got out into the crypto gaming space so early. Um, yeah. That said. Gala Games already has like three card games coming out that are just, I think, a lot better. Um, unfortunately for Gods Unchained, um, they're they're just like like way better animations, just like like way more personality. Like so, I feel like Gods Unchained is kind of Hearthstone light in my in my mind. It's like it's yeah. Hearthstone light. It's just like a slightly, it's it's Hearthstone if you were making it with a hundred times less money kind of is is the way that that i think i would imagine two games finishing out um mm -hmm. and they did a really good job for that fact like it's solid but when it's competing against other card games that had a lot more spent on them that have like a lot more personality and 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 animations and like a lot of the gala games uh card games your your creatures are actually living on the board moving around and like you play yeah. a card and like your creature literally goes and attacks the other creature it's like star wars uh on the millennium falcon type yeah. of type of games coming out on gala. Jaric, yeah and and i just feel like that's card gaming to the next level the level that players want to see it go to uh, we want to visualize, like, if our card is a creature, we want to see that creature on the board. We want to we want to watch playing cards through that creature. We want to watch a creature actually make the moves and stuff. So that's that. I'll also put I'll put uh, Gods Unchained at uh, at B tier. Sure. I, I I won't I don't play it that much. I would cover it if they like made some like really big changes or if they sponsored a video. But besides that, it kind of just exists. I don't, I don't know. Wait, can yeah. I ask you something, Stash? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So I think that a lot of viewers in this space, or just viewers on YouTube in general, have a very strange relationship with creators getting sponsorships. Sure. Um, because I think there are a lot of viewers that are like, oh, that's so cool. Like my creator that I like watching can now like do this full time potentially, which means more content's going to get made, which means I get more entertainment value. And it's like a lot of viewers do see that side of it and they're happy for the creators. But then a lot of viewers feel like they're getting robbed as soon as money enters the picture for a creator. You're because shill. now, Yeah, no, because they're like, now <laughs> I can't get an honest opinion from you anymore. You're because lying. You're, paid. you're paid and to give like, me you that could opinion. Be saying the same thing that you were saying about the game beforehand but now the fact that that you have to disclose and say they're also a sponsor which makes sense we should totally have to disclose every time we actually get paid but if 100%. you're honest about it and you're like this is how i feel and they like love our opinion on their game enough they they want to help us promote our opinion on it even more it's like i feel like that shouldn't be a negative for anyone and yeah. actually as a creator i am starting to and i 
I hope this isn't about just my own paycheck, like my own pocketbook or not, but I am starting to, to like value games as far more serious in this space if mm -hmm. they actually care about the creators that are covering their game. Oh, yeah. And like oh, yeah. one of the red flags that I realized about Axie Infinity too late was the fact that they desired no relationship with creators. Like they would only talk, but they would never work towards yes. actually creating any real relationship with creators was actually a massive red flag because the more competent that a game is, the more experienced a team is, the, the, the more that they've just been here and done this before and understand the value of having content creators covering their games, how important that is for a healthy ecosystem. The more these teams want to create partnerships with you. Yes. What? do it in a long-term way and want to make sure that they're building a healthy community of creators. So I think that if a creator you're watching is covering a game and then a month later or a year later, they're like, hey, this game we've been covering is now sponsoring us. That is very bullish about that game because it means they're paying attention to their community, one, and two, they want to help that community like survive and thrive which is very bullish for that game's long-term potential. So I think that we need to actually somehow like change the whole conversation that's happening and be like, no, if a game wants to sponsor creators, that is bullish about that game. That, mm -hmm. that is, is too, that's like a thumbs up. It's an extra green flag. It doesn't, it's yeah. not like a single determining factor on whether or not that game is legit or not, but it's definitely a green flag. Sorry. That was a little rant. I wanted to go on there. No, I, I totally agree with you, man. I think that, you know, there is a stigma around, you know, creators getting paid. And I, I've posted many times about this, you know, and people uh, being open into questions and just getting some hilarious responses like, hey, you know, how do you think that, uh, you know, gaming content creators like myself and others, how do you think we get paid? And people are like, you, you shouldn't get paid. You, you just you got to live in mom's basement and you just do this for free. You have a, a nine to five, and then you then then when you get home from your nine to five, you work another six hours to make this content. You just love it so much. That's why you do it. And I go, yeah. that's some horse shit right there, man. Do people do <laughs> you know? not understand how much work actually goes they, into yeah, creating it's hard. this it's content? Hard. Like I, I have two full-time editors working for me and I have an agent that is working for me. And I still spend like, like last night, I spent eight hours researching and filming four videos in a row after already working four hours during the daytime with my team and then working the next morning yeah. as well. It's just like, like we're putting more time. It, those of us who are really like obsessed about our channels and creating content and growing the space, like we're spending more time trying to create contents and build a community than a lot of people are spending on full-time jobs. And that yeah. is just like straight up, like way more time. Like you guys don't understand how many hours goes into these channels every week. And like the best edited videos and stuff, you don't even really know they're edited. That means we did a good job. It's like, yeah. yeah. No, yeah, you're, you're right, man. I, I think there are a lot of people, you know, because even in chat, we're seeing people like, oh, you know, he's got a gala bias. We know he's paid by gala. And, mm -hmm. you know, that doesn't mean that you're not going to give us your honest opinion. And that's how I do things as well. You know, I, there, there's games that I have taken sponsorships for and I have sponsored and I disclose them and then I still shit all over them. If some, if, and not because I'm trying to do it to be me. It's just, I, this is my honest opinion. I love yeah. Gala, but I'll say, I'll say if I have a problem or if I see some issue with it, I love Splinterlands, I, you know, and they've sponsored, you know, videos. A lot of these, you know, projects on here have sponsored me in the past. And it, it, but if I see something wrong with their game or something I don't like, or they make a move or something like that, that I don't necessarily agree with, I'm going to let you guys know. That's just how I roll. And because what, what they're paying for is they're not paying for you to give a specific opinion. They're just right. paying for you to give an opinion. Yes. And that is the dividing line for me. And I think that, you know, great creators like yourself and like some other ones out there, uh, you know, understand that and, you know, truly try and give us a, a you know, a, a, a true look into what they think about what's going on there. And I, uh -huh. I find value in that. And, you know, we do need to be supported, and especially right now during this bear market. You guys have no, no idea how hard it is to get a company to, to give you anything. Even, like, okay, like, like, here's a great example. And I'll kind of break this down. I, I've done promotion for tons of different games out there over the last five years. And I'd say maybe only 3% of those games have ever sponsored a video or, or worked with me in some sort of monetary uh, you know, kind of capacity, which means mm -hmm. most games get me to do free stuff for them. And then mm -hmm. I, they, they give nothing back and they want me to do, you know, they want me to host an event. They want me to be in this tournament. They want me to make a video. They want me to do all this stuff. And I go, do you guys understand how much money that costs me to make? I have to come out of pocket to make that yeah. content for them. 
And then they're like, and I'm like, hey, but can I have an NFT to give away to our community? Oh, oh, I, I, oh, God, I don't know about yeah. that. It's Steph. like, wait, you don't want it? You I, won't even give us an that, NFT, man. and you want me to pay three employees to do work for your game? Exactly. Like that exactly. is absolutely insane. So that's why I'm saying game companies that actually know what's up, that have experience, they are willing to compensate creators yeah. and then i know you were pointing out some of the haters in chat it's like people will say that like oh jake from on gaming only says positive stuff about gala games because they pay him and then i make a video absolutely shitting on gala's last horse drop for for mirandas because i really care about that game and i want yeah. it to be good for gamers yeah. and i share my, my my opinion on it which is that they shouldn't have done the sale because they said they weren't going to sell horses and swords because they sold the forges and the they, they sold the means of production for this so so now Gala's competing with the gamers who they sold the means of production. This is right. just not right. Like this is not right. the way that this game should be made. Yeah. And if I actually feel that way, guys, I say it. Like yeah. Gala doesn't pay us so that we don't, we're, we're, we now have to be a dishonest liar, only say po positive things. It's like, no, yeah. that's not how it works. We are here to sh like, first and foremost, for the viewer, and I think that the best games understand that, guess what? If viewers don't trust that content creator because that content creator isn't being honest with their viewer, then sponsoring them is actually not going to help you at all because people know that that creator is not trustworthy in the first place. So, like, it's all about the long-term game. And long-term, if you want people to, to, to believe what you're saying, then you have to say what you actually believe. Yeah. No, I agree, man. I agree. And, you know, a lot of people will take the stance, too, of like, well, if you love it, you should just do it. Otherwise, get out of here. I just saw a comment about that. And I'm like, you know, we can love it and still uh, you know, respect our time and respect our craft enough to say, hey, yeah. it's great when, when you know, uh, these games that we support tirelessly will support us in return. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I don't see anything wrong with that at all, you know, so... Uh, but anyways, we digress a little bit here. I I, I like the I like the that conversation, and it, it is it is a point that that comes up you know quite often, and everyone has a little bit of a different opinion on it. You know, has a little bit of a different opinion on it. So I, I appreciate your words there, Jake. All right, let's get back to rating some games because that's what we're here for, and we still got a couple. We still got some some bangers here to go. So I want to get these going out. So uh, next up here, next up is Star Atlas. Uh, they've released a lot of stuff here recently. What do you think about Star Atlas? Oh man. Star Atlas is a hard game for me to give, a, a, I think, an accurate opinion on. Like, I can share my opinion, but for that opinion, opinion to actually line up with reality, I think is difficult right now because there's so many unknowns about Star Atlas right now because they, la they lost half of their runway in the FTX collapse. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and they, they sold so many NFT ships. Um, the fact that that they are the ones that are selling these nfts they're not selling means of production it's like i didn't participate in any of these ship sales actually i just felt like there wasn't enough promise of being able to get any type of value out of these the only actual playable experiences starless has given us are captcha simulators or timer timer simulators like alien worlds um like those types of gameplay experiences are all we've actually gotten now they are developing on unreal engine 5 I think if the FTX thing gets worked out and they can get their runway back, I'm hopeful for them, man. But here's the other yeah. thing. Starless isn't actually building this game themselves. They are, they are, they've hired a third party game developer to build this game. So the, the, the company that you're actually buying NFTs from isn't building Star Atlas. The company that that's like actually lost half of their runway in this FTX collapse, like they're using that runway to pay another company to build Star Atlas. So I don't know. You guys will notice my opinions changed a lot based off of the track record too of the of the people who that are running these games. And as much as I love the CEO of Star Atlas, he's never made a game before either. So I'm gonna have to put Star Atlas in C with Blancos. Go and C, huh? Okay. Have you have you played the recent updates? Um, I saw you, some you gameplays have, like, of the in world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They they yeah. have the Unreal Engine uh, hangar setup now, right? Uh, the well, no, it's gone beyond that. They have gameplay, so you can now fly your ships around and mm -hmm. uh, in like a, a um, dogfight simulator, which is pretty cool mm -hmm. actually. And then they mm -hmm. have a racing one too. So like you're you're racing your ships. 
uh, through, you know, a bunch of like race gates and trying to do a timed thing, which is, you know, actually is, is, is kind of fun, man. I, I enjoyed it. I mean, there are many games, you know, kind of based upon the the sprawling, you know, vision for Star Atlas. That mm. is the, my biggest concern with Star Atlas. It's so big. It's got Star Citizen vibes to me in that respect. Uh, and you're right. I mean, about the, the the studio being outsourced, but that's a pretty common thing in pretty much every game development studio these days. There's no one studio that's that's doing everything in house. I mean, there literally isn't, and that's mm-hmm. Gala included, right? Most of all of their games are are, are other studios that they pretty well, much brought that, on board. But but you're right. It's a, it's it's a it's a common situation with every developer out there. They're not just you know doing everything in house. Um, so it, it's it, I I definitely agree with you on that one though. Yeah, Gala's own games they are building entirely in house. Right. Yep. Now the games that they're right. acting as a publisher for, those are getting developed and released by the different studios that are yeah. making and releasing those games. But those games are also like they're releasing, they're publishing their own game on Gala that they're making themselves. Yeah. So like, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. it's a little different. I I really it, want it Star Atlas yeah. to succeed. Yeah. I I think the vision for Star Atlas is incredible. I think that it's awesome. Um, I think that in order to actually achieve it, we need Neuralink, and we need to be able to just send the images to our visual <laughs> cortex <laughs> of our brain. Right there, directly to it, man. Yeah. yeah. All right. And then, and All right, then the go. Neuralink needs to read our movement signals that we're sending to our spine and like hijack them so that we move in that world as well. Yeah. And then we can have the Star Wars vision actually yeah. come about in reality. But even then, we're talking like trillions of dollars are gonna have to get spent on this they're gonna have to sell way more ships man so yeah i mean I, I i do i do think that i do think that they you know like from what i've seen and and, and the game point like i think that they could make a fun game i mean if they if they you know scale things back a little bit and then maybe it's not as expansive as a star citizen i i do think they have a decent base here uh you know my biggest concern yeah is, is similar to what you said with solana uh them being on solana and losing a significant portion of you know their funds now they may get that stuff back. There, there may be a time yeah, where, like, true. you know, what I'm saying, where they get that money back. You know, a lot of people were affected by the FTX scandal here, and we don't really know exactly how it's going to play out right now. Not looking so hot. <laughs> I mean, let's be perfectly honest. Uh, yeah, but I, I, I think don't, FTX I, I don't has like five billion now. They've recovered five billion. So, so some people are going to get some stuff back. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 yeah, we, we just, you know, it, we don't know how it's going to play out. And, but that is a big factor here in the fact that they are on a chain that a lot of people are, you know, kind of migrating away from. We saw Utes and D Gods moving away from, you know, Solana. And I think that we're going to see more people jumping ship. So, you know, maybe they look at uh, jumping ship as well and moving somewhere else. I, I don't know at this point. I don't, you know, they, I think it's possible. You know, I think that they, they could make that migration. It would be a lot bigger than, you know, just, moving some pfp collection over right uh so that that could be a, a pretty big factor here but um i i would probably agree with you that, that it's a fair evaluation to put them in c yeah and, and guys i'm putting them at c and just so you as another point of evidence that i'm not just talking based off of who's paying me like i participated in that in the star atlas like pre-sale i put ten thousand yeah. dollars into into atlas and polis coins and at like very low price it could even be the coins could be lower than that now but like i have millions of atlas and polis coins and i'm still yeah, shitting same. on them like i'm sh- i'm sharing my honest opinion about these games based off of what i really feel based off of the evidence that i've seen i'm not going to be right about everything but i am telling you what i'm actually thinking yeah no i, I i'm right there with you man i we you know we did the same thing and i you know i still have a a stable of ships and I, you know, I'm still rolling Oni if, if we, if something, if something goes down, if we, if we ever get to that point, what, but, but uh, I didn't participate in like the recent land sale or the, uh, the yeah. claim stake sale, which mm-hmm. I, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't on. I was a little, little bit too, too pricey for my blood, man. A little too pricey. pricey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, moving on here. Uh, this is a, another, you know, one, one of the, we'll say one of the bigger hits here recently. What do you think about Alluvium? Um, I'm more bullish on Alluvium than I am on Star Atlas because they actually have the t- all the teams in-house, all the team members in-house that are building the game, which gives you a lot more creative control. So, like, not only does Star Atlas have the most ambitious vision ever for a video game ever it's crazy, made, yeah, right. but they can't actually make their vision real because they don't have hands-on control of the game's development because they're outsourcing its production. Whereas at least Alluvium, because they're building the game themselves, like 
like uh, Kieran or Aaron or don't like Kieran or Aaron, like the Warwick team that is in charge mm. of Alluvium, at least he can like look at how they're like shading one of the characters and be like, oh no, that like change that color or like that's not how that that should work or like this this game should work different, right? Like at least he has some creative control hands on with the actual people building the game because they work directly like for him in his same studio. So that that is uh, bullish for for them. That said. Uh, the open world alpha that they released is pretty scarce. It's pretty empty. There's not actually that much to do inside the Alluvium world yet. Um, so they're going to have to do something to make that feel more alive. Like, yeah. I don't know, make more of the plants move around, like create some more danger, put some other animals sure. or something in there. Like, I don't know, do something to make that game world. It looks very pretty, but to feel it more like an adventure when you're actually going trying to find those, those uh, alluvials. Yeah. And then the auto battle gameplay, I don't know if it's just too complicated or what, but I still have not found out like an easy way to play it where I like know how to counter what the opponent is playing. And right, like, right. Okay. It's yeah. So make it prettier, more alive, uh, a little bit easier to understand what's going on in the auto battler. And I think they have something here. I think there's potential. I I'll put uh, Alluvium in, in B tier. Sure. Yeah, I would agree with you. I think they have a good start. You know, it, it is still in closed beta, and but I think for you know what they've done here in a fairly short time for closed beta, I think it you know it's it, they they've rolled out quite a bit of stuff here over the last three or four months uh, with first the you know just the auto battle or kind of version, which I kind of agree with you on that one. Uh, the open world it does need more, but it's a great kind of proof of concept. Hey, you can go in, yeah. you can explore. Uh, you know, one of the you know, one of the larger land masses, and it it looks pretty cool. I mean, the the look of the land is great. You're right. There's not a lot yeah. of like things out there to do uh, and then they just released zero right alluvium zero which is kind of like their their mini game for for you know collecting resources on your land uh, mm -hmm. i like the trifecta and where they're going but i think you're right they just they, they need more stuff you know similar to how i felt about big time the great start um but you you know you need more content like there's not enough there to keep people playing in that overworld uh really i think you know uh, at this point and you know they know that i think i think they're, they're pretty aware of that uh, that's why all those things are gonna get wiped so anything that you're doing here in your pre beta progress is is going to be <laughs> to rip it from you right from your wallet <laughs> they're right there with yeah. you um okay we got a couple more to go what do you think about spider tanks i know you played a lot of spider tanks yeah uh spider tanks is a very fun game i think that the the way they did the pilot system have you experienced that uh crypto stash where like yeah. as a free-to-play player you can go in owning nothing just create your gala games account go in with nothing and you can just select in the garage that you want to be a pilot. It will queue you with a random tank that yep. another player owns that just has him. Sometimes you get lucky, queue. sometimes you don't. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you get really lucky. You can win like 10 legend. bucks in a single match. Yeah, get a legend. Sometimes you get super unlucky. You're getting like one or two cents. <laughs> um, but it's yeah. still just very cool that you can go in with a free-to-play player. And sometimes you can compete with the best tank, sometimes with the worst tank. Um, but yeah, the, I think the biggest argument against spider tanks is just like kind of how pay to win it is mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. in yeah. that like a level zero battle rating tank versus a level 30 battle rating tank. It's like you really don't have a chance. Nope. Um, but I do think that the pilot system, like I have made it to very high ranks only ever queuing as a pilot. And they're yeah. planning on making it in the future so that the higher rank you get, starts removing low tiers of tank as even being accessible of getting as a pilot. So like, yeah. say you're like in the, it, like you're the highest tier in, in ranked play and you still don't own a tank. Every time you queue as a pilot, it's guaranteeing you're going to get a good tank, like above yeah. battle rating 20 sense. or something um, because of the rank that you're actually in. So I don't know. I think that that allows for a very robust free to play to earn type economy. So I'm optimistic about about spider tanks. Uh, I'll A or B is where I'd put it. Uh, I guess A. It's fully out there. It, the, the play to earn is live now too. Yeah. Um, the bridge is open as well. So everything is is finally full on going. We, this is an experiment. I'm guessing that things are going to need to change. Uh, this isn't going to be a perfect economy at the beginning uh mm -hmm. but i'm excited to see how this how this plays out yeah 
No, I, I like spider tanks as a game, man. I mean, I, I like being able to combine the little tank parts together and try different, you know, different, you know, combinations. I do agree with you. I think it's incredibly pay to win, you know, uh, that you, you really have to have some great tanks and, and you're not getting, like I said, it's, it's a roll of dice if you want to play for free, but they still have the option to play for free, which is great. Um, you know, I do think that they have a fairly well thought out tokenomic, uh, you know, structure right now. It just needs some testing, like some long term testing. And that's the kind of you know problem we see a lot of times is that something seems great in the beginning. And <clears throat> but and everyone knows that right when the you know, tokenomic, the you know, play to earn goes live, go, 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 get as much as you can, drain it quickly. And we see that with every Web3 game. Anytime yeah. the, the you know, earnings go live, they want to drain it as fast as possible. So and, uh, you know, that that might, you know, warrant some adjustments as, as, as we go. What do you think of Spider Tank's honor system? Because, so they've implemented this honor system when they opened up the bridge, yeah. which pretty much hurts your ability to earn if you do things that hurt the ecosystem. Yeah. So essentially, if every single day you're taking the silk that you're earning and instead of using it to upgrade your tank or buy tank parts or whatever, you're just bridging it to ETH and instantly selling it then it hurts your honor score. And the next day you're not going to be able to earn as much silk. Yeah. yeah. What do you think about that? Uh, I actually like it. I think that there's, pro there's, there's some issues probably with the honor system and some of the nuances of how, you know, of the negative effects and positive effects. But I think that it, it kind of accomplishes on a basic level, the notion of not being a drain on the play to earn system. And so even if you are, you know, if your intention is to always cash out, you have to do it over a longer period of time versus having to do it quick, which will, you know, not put as much pressure, you know, right away on something. So I, I, I do like that. That's what it was kind of created to do. I do think there's probably going to need to be some adjustments and, you know, that's, that's always going to be the case with any, I mean, not just blockchain games, Every freaking game does this, guys. I mean, every game out there, you know, introduces something new and then they got to rebalance it over time. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it is just a part of online multiplayer games because, you know, there's things that people won't think about and combinations that, you know, the, the team couldn't have even, you know, fathomed that were going to happen. And so they have to make those changes. And it really just comes down to how the team reacts to those things. That's really, to me, what proves that this is going to be a good game or a good studio in the long term. Mm hmm. Yeah, speed of innovation is yeah. the biggest determining factor in future success. Yeah, and we do a lot. I mean, we're, we're you know when it comes to, to the gaming side of things in Web three, Web three, we really innovate quickly. Like we iterate mm -hmm. fast. I think yeah. faster than any you know kind of niche it within gaming. But I, I do think that that is one strong suit that we just have in general for Web three games is that we're okay and we understand the iteration yeah. process. That that can hurt public perception though because I think a lot of, of people think. That long that like the biggest factor about long term success is not failing. So then when they see people failing, they're like, oh, they're not going to make it. But that's completely the opposite of true. The biggest determining factor of long term success is how fast you're innovating and innovating quickly means that you're failing a lot. So it's yeah. actually who can fail fastest is who succeeds the most long term. Kind of kind of interesting. But yeah. I, I think you're right, though, that, that crypto gaming, I mean, just inherently people who are making crypto games are those that are more inclined to quickly innovate. Because yeah. if you're not inclined to quickly innovate, guess what? You're still working on the next traditional game. Right now. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's um, all right. Let's move on here. Last Expedition. We were just talking about a little bit earlier. We, we got to play a, a really cool play test of that, uh, you know, late last year. Mm -hmm. We haven't heard too much from them. They, they've yeah, done they did, things. They did another holiday play test. Yeah. They've been porting Last Expedition over to Unreal Engine. Yeah. Um, and I think that port is like pretty much done. So I expect Unreal Engine, uh, uh, Last Expedition, like Unreal Engine at Last Expedition might come out this year. Like, I think yeah. that's totally a possibility. So I really like the game. I love the mix of player versus environment and player versus player. I think that. Uh, the whole team squad as aspect. It's just a really fun game. Um, I'll definitely put Last Expedition in A tier. Yeah, I agree, man. Like, you know, when I, I put out my, you know, top 16 games for 2023, this was this was high, high on my list, guys. You guys can go check out that video on my channel here of what I think is going to be the most successful here in 2023. But Last, Last Expedition was very high up there, man. You know, just from that one play test, I really enjoyed it. I think they had a great direction. There was a lot of elements there that were really a lot of fun to play. And the look of it, obviously, was something I love. 
I, you know, they have the kind of like this, you know, a little bit of 80s vibe to it, like, you know, uh, throwback 80s vibe. And, and I, I love that, too. I just I, I want to I want to play it again. I keep asking, like, like when when is the next play? Like, when can we jump back in and play this on stream? And, you know, there hasn't been a lot of movement from the team, you know, in that direction towards creators. Uh, so, but, but if, so if you hear from Jake, tell him Stash has been asking, damn, he wants to know what the hell is up. Let's get back yeah. in and blast him. They did a play <laughs> test, a holiday play test, but my family was uh, celebrating Christmas early and I was in California and like, I tried to install the game at my grandma's house to participate in that play <laughs> test and she did not have fast enough internet. I missed it. Oh, see, then it they, was a they, sad day. They must've forgot about old Stash then. I, I wasn't getting <sighs> the love on that one, even though Dude, I've been asking felt- him. They invited me and I didn't even show up. So you see how unfair the world is all around. It's like no one can be happy. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's... Um, all right, cool, cool. So let's move on here to uh, some of the last ones we have. What about Shrapnel? What do you think about Shrapnel? This is out of all the games here. This is the one that is not necessarily playable. It's the only one on the list here that that you can't. I don't know actually anything about it. Play. I don't know anything don't know about anything. It. You've What's never seen anything saying? about Shrapnel. Oh, Shrap. Okay, po- pull up the trailer for Shrapnel, and then after you have that up, then then we we'll we'll, we'll come back to that one. And first you can, you... AAA FPS blockchain game. Okay, okay. Who's uh who's making this game? AAA uh, so... team. We're a unique team of designers, producers, artists, programmers. Let's see. We've collectively produced some of the biggest franchises in entertainment: Halo, Call of Duty, Westworld, and many more. Okay, let's see. Mark Long, Don Norbury. Yeah, they have a fairly experienced team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm looking at, like, we're, we're talking people with 20 years of experience, 75-plus games under their belt. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, this looks solid. This looks really solid. How yeah. did you hear about this? How did I not hear about this game yet? When did they announce? They This has been around for a little while, man. So, uh, you know, they, they've been, uh, you know, last year, mid last year, maybe even, and they've done already some NFT sales. Uh, you know, what really caught my attention was the trailer for this game. When I saw that shit, mm-hmm. out of every trailer that I've ever seen for any Web3 game, it got me incredibly hyped. I was like, oh my gosh, mm-hmm. this looks amazing. Like, I want to play in this oh, world, yeah, look, man. They're it following was like, me on Twitter. It was super hyped, man. I was like, "Let's go, man!" And and you know, it, it's on, uh, you know, it's on Avalanche, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, dude, so. this looks this looks really solid. I I cannot rate it yet because literally I am just learning about it right now. Um, a well, first bit impressions. About just, that, just, okay, like- so so this is what I love about first impressions like this, right? Just like any other gamer, it was they, they just you know saw a little something and they're gonna go check it out for the very first time. They have a first impression look of like, okay, here's this. Okay, I see a little bit about the team. Okay, I saw the trailer. Cool. You know, cool, cool, cool. You know, y- y- your first impression is valuable as well. Just just on very yeah. first impression, what would you say? I, so here's the thing. As, a, as someone who's just like hanging out with my friends, sharing a first impression with a couple buddies, that, that feels totally chill yeah. because it's just a couple people. But as an influencer, say 2,000 people watch this, 3,000 people watch this, like – my first impression, if false, could leave thousands of people with a but no, no, no. False See, but that's, that's what I'm saying. It's not, it's not is, about. So. It's not about your, your it looks, impression. It looks can't solid. be false. I, I will put this in a, in A or B just off the of first impression. But yeah, I need to learn a lot more about this. But it looks yeah. like solid team. Uh, the the game looks super high quality, but I can't know how fun it is, which is the second uh, kind of Factor, tier yeah. like of the of the three-legged stool here we need quality team fun game and then healthy economy healthy tokenomics so yeah. i don't know anything about these two all i've yeah. i've read a little bit about the team now that's it yeah all right we'll, we'll stick them in b in b tier yeah, for put you it I mean, in b. put it in b for now I, I, i'm right there with you man i've seen the stuff i'm hyped on it i mean I, you know we haven't no one's played it so so you're right there there is that factor there uh, i did want to kind of include this one here because uh you know like i said that that trailer and what they've been doing is you know i'm actually really interested in but uh, can't wait to get my hands on and actually play the game and that will you know really i think help to solidify that opinion from from the you know footage and things uh, you know looking pretty sharp man i like the concept they have a good story behind yeah. it and, and just kind of some of the things so i'm, I'm interested in what they yeah, have i follow, to, to i followed it. them back on on twitter and i'm gonna check out their uh their econ paper and their white paper um and maybe make a video about them so thanks for uh thanks for bringing them up for me yeah oh savage yeah so uh savage sandy's like what about metalcore that's that's another good one that, that i should have had on here too but you know, we can only put so many games on the tier list guys as you can see we're we're, we're hitting about an hour 30 here we still got more <laughs> to go 
Uh, you know, I, everyone always is like, what about this game? What about this game? Session? I'm like, I know, man, I wish we could have them all on here. Yeah. But I only Dude, there's, little... there's over 200 crypto games there's, in development yeah, there's right so now. Many. So many. So I try to pick 20 that I think are, you know, are good for, for the guests and what yeah. we're doing. So, yeah. all right, we got four more to go. Let, let's let's get it. Uh, Legends Reborn. Legends Reborn earlier. is fun. Have you played this one, Crypto Stash? I didn't get on it. No, I I missed the play okay. test, man. So I, I, I didn't I... play it. Well, do you like do you like card games? Is I like, love card games. Cards? I I, okay. I, I beta tested GU. I've been playing Splinterlands. I played Magic the Gathering when I was young for many many years. Played in tournaments. Um, I don't okay. play Hearthstone or anything like that. But uh, but yeah, the huge card player. Yeah. I think Legends Reborn is right up your alley. Then it is yeah. so fun. Um, it's it's kind of like it's kind of like Hearthstone, except that you're playing cards through creatures. Well, I've when seen you, it. Yeah, I've when seen you it. attack your with play. your creatures, yeah. you draw from that creature's set of potential cards. So, like, you pretty much get to create a card deck for each of yeah. your creatures that you're bringing into the into the game. Um, and yeah, it's just a really fun game. I think that there's a lot of potential here. I hit rank one in one of the early play tests, and I was I like, "Oh yeah, I love it." <laughs> I saw it, man. I keep tabs on everybody. I saw I saw your your footage of it because, like I said, I, I I didn't get a chance to play it, but I did uh, watch your video replay of it, and I you know I was like, "Hey, this looks cool, man." And I just you know I didn't I yeah. missed the, that test. Um, so Champions Arena, though, not to be mistaken for Champions Ascension. Yes. Champions Arena is another kind of RPG plus like turn-based card game mm -hmm. that's very similar to legends reborn um but it's going to be pc and it's also going to be on mobile and the yeah. animations in champions arena are crazy they're just like so such high quality it's like like every single oh, skill right, right, has on, like this... we no we're talking about legends reborn I man you can't just you can't just file in another galaxy like you, I, okay, I get it, it, but... it so like i want to put legends reborn as a tier but the existence of champions arena which I think is A tier, <laughs> makes me actually want to put Legendary Born as B tier. Okay. Um, just because they're so similar. And I think yeah. the Champions Arena has like the upper hand on like higher quality animations, a full like role play game around it. That said, Legends Reborn might have a, a like a bigger competitive scene. I don't know though, because Champions Arena also has such a great player versus player experience as mm -hmm. well. Champions Arena just blew me away. That is an A tier game. <laughs> I have to play both. I, like I said, I, I those, those are two that I just I, I missed the play test for. I didn't, I didn't have a chance to get on uh, either of them. Uh, but uh, the, I'll put them on my list, you know, based upon your recommendation here, and definitely hit, hit them up next time they have a, a go round. Yeah, I, I have a, a live stream of Champions Arena. Um, yeah. But yeah, that game and Legends Reborn, they're similar and also very different. Um, but yeah. both great, both a yeah. lot of potential. Wouldn't it be? All right, so let, let's uh, let's talk about Sandbox here. We're, you know, different than everything else on the list here, but what do you think about Sandbox? How do you feel about that game? Okay, before I answer that question, I have to ask, ask you, how many players does the Sandbox actually have? Because, so I was having a conversation with Nate, one of my editors, uh, because uh -huh. he's he's he was working on researching for a video, and he's like, this article says the Sandbox only has a thousand monthly players. The sandbox says they have like forty thousand, and then they they say they have two million registered players. It's like, how many people are actually playing the sandbox, or what's actually playable right now, Crypto Sash? That's a great question. You know, the the to say like, hey, here's the daily active users is a little bit misleading because they're in a pre, you know, like a, a an alpha state. Mm -hmm. uh, they you know they have these seasons that are a timed thing, and that is when the most people are playing. There are experiences and things you can play in between them. Like right now, they just launched one uh, season. It's it's like a um, you know uh, a save the bees type of campaign uh, like organization, and there's a playable thing there. So I mean, like if you want to say okay, if you spread all out and say daily active users, is it you know a thousand per? I mean, probably with these smaller experiences, yeah. But when you mm -hmm. talk about like their actual seasons where all of the big experiences are available, like The Walking Dead, Snoop Dogg stuff, things with Playboy, you know, Avenged Sevenfold and a lot of the other partners they have. I mean, yeah, they're easy. They're, there's 40,000 plus people playing that game during those times because mm -hmm. that's when the earnings available. That's when everything's going on. That's when all the, the big stuff is going around. So uh, Alpha Season 3 was big. You know, it was pretty big. I mean, it, and, and I, I think they do a good job of iterating each time and making improvements. So we're just kind of waiting for the next uh, uh, okay, Alpha so Season 4. So. I played the very first Alpha Season. I haven't played anything since then. How much more fun was Alpha Season 3 compared to Alpha Season 1? Oh, sig oh significant improvements. Yeah, okay. I mean, it's like night and day. I mean, like the first season was very basic. Uh, this second season, there was a, t a ton of great experiences, you know, mashed up with 
uh, a lot of creator experiences. And that's one of the things I love about it is all the user generated great actual games that people are creating. Uh, mm -hmm. You know that that you know aren't, don't have the big brand name. You know they're, they're, it's not like the experience from Playboy or Snoop, but mm -hmm. they have actual great playability. One of the one of the fun ones uh, was like they had this eight bit arcade one, and you can go in and play a bunch of like classic style type of arcade games. Uh, and they made a side scroller Mario style game, but using the sandbox. And I thought that was pretty innovative. Like you can only go like side scroll. And, and so like the things people can do with with the sandbox and the experiences, I think are, are, are really fun. So yeah, I mean, there, okay. there's a lot. Uh, one, one more question before I answer and, and actually give this thing a tier. <laughs> right now, as they stand today, which game is actually more fun to play? Blankos or the sandbox? Oof. Um, I would say right now where they stand, if you were going to compare season four and compare Blanco's, I would say Blanco's is probably a more consistent playable experience okay. um, because it's actually launched. The game is actually launched and out there and mm -hmm. it's, it's playable. The alpha yep. is, you know, is it's an alpha. Like it's like, Hey, you know, they're, they're getting to the point where they're building out this massive metaverse and they're very different. So I, I would probably have to give the advantage to Blanco's in, in the kind of like daily playability. Um, mm -hmm. that, and that's my opinion. I mean, I, I love both. Okay. I love both, but yeah. All right. Right. all right. So it sounds like the opinion that I've been sharing about the sandbox still stands. So this is, this is my view of the sandbox currently. A ton of potential. Essentially, when I think about the sandbox, I think about it as the Roblox of the blockchain. Yeah. And Roblox is a highly, highly successful metaverse where there is there's so many players, millions of kids playing, tens of millions of kids playing content that other kids made. So I think that if the yeah. sandbox can pull off Roblox on the blockchain, I mean, it could become an order of magnitude bigger than Roblox because now with the blockchain, with revenue share, it's like you can award creators of playable content in the sandbox so much easier more instantly and and fairly than roblox can you can kind of build this whole ecosystem so yeah. the, the the potential is there the potential is oh, incredible yeah. the potential is s tier for sure and then also their 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 sponsorships all their brand partnerships and stuff that's um, also yeah. s tier yeah. like bring they they've brought in so many incredible influence influencers so many incredible like mainstream triple a uh partners but then where they fall short is i still feel like the gameplay at least the last time i played it is d tier and a d tier game it's going to be a D tier game, even if it has S tier dreams and S tier partnerships. So what has to happen is the actual gameplay needs to catch up to the vision. Like yeah. if it can be smooth to play, if it can feel really fun to play, and if they can actually create something that like a metaverse that feels good to exist in and run around in, if they can make their gameplay more fun than Blanco's gameplay with their grander vision and their better partnerships, it's like then this is going to be an incredible ecosystem. So right now I, I'll put them B tier. Okay. Even though their gameplay is worse than Blanco's right now, their vision is much, much grander. Um, and I think the blockchain is perfect for user generated and owned content. Um, yeah. And I still have a lot of, of, of hope for them, but it's not a game right now that I have any desire to play just yeah. for fun. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I think that, uh, you know, that's fair. That, that's a, a decent evaluation of it. I, I do feel like even with alpha season three, there were some great experiences, but I do wish there were some like better, well thought out games. I feel like a lot of the indie games, the ones developed by people were probably better uh than uh than you know than some of the just experience the brand experiences so th mm -hmm. those were i was a little bit disappointed but i mean still a lot of people playing it a lot of people are earning in it uh they, i think that sandbox does a great job with all the things that we need to do a great job with including like making the onboarding experience super easy uh and you know there is a lot of you know potential there for user generated content we know that's a big direction for gaming in general and i'll tell you what i'll tell you what buddy i know that, that you don't think that it's fun to play right now Wait till you get to play the game I'm building in the sandbox. Fair. Yeah, no, that's the thing. The sandbox user generated that content is, it is, is going to be what makes you break it. Like they have to create a fun, smooth game engine. That is it. But it yeah. has to be a fun and smooth and easily workable game yeah. engine that a lot of people sure. can create with. So that is their task at hand. 
Um, I honestly think it's like maybe their focus isn't best spent right now, creating the best playable experiences for Alpha Season 3. Like their their effort needs to be focused on making this engine smoother, more fun, easier yeah. to build with for, for consumers. So that, yeah, everyone, so Sandbox can go viral because everyone's logging on to play the Crypto Stash game. Like that's that's the future of the Sandbox. We'll see, but like, like, you know, the game is, I mean, like the game that I'm building is going to be fun. I mean, I, I've, I've played all the sandbox experiences and the, and the game I'm building that is, it's a, you're a secret, it's a secret agent themed game. Uh, it is going to be a lot of fun. It's way different than everything else on the sandbox uh, so far. And, you know, you, you're right about the, the engine and the creator. You know, this is something they iterate over every season too. So they've already, you know, been making changes to the game maker and they have some big changes that are upcoming for that game maker soon too, that are going to make some pretty big, you know, waves with, you know, all the developers and people being able to do it. So uh, I agree. I think that I think that, you know, B is still a solid tier. I might put them in a tier at this point. But uh, but yeah, I, I, I definitely appreciate your validation there. All right. Last two. We got we got to close this out. My pet hooligan. My pet hooligan. What do you think I, haven't, about this game? I haven't played this one. I, I'm not that familiar with uh, with my pet hooligan. Um, OK, so what, what do you think? What do you think as far as as far as game goes? I'm I'm looking up some gameplay right now, guys. This this is how. Okay, I've seen this. I've seen this on Twitter a little bit. Yeah. Um, I I still don't know who's making it. This is probably just gonna go D tier, just because I can't. I don't have oh, enough D. time to to give a uh, a fair evaluation here, so I'm just gonna be safe and offend to them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go and do my. They they actually have a really great team behind them. Uh, so AMGI Studio, I think it's AMGI. Yes, yeah, it's, uh, AMGI Studios. Uh, a lot of of veterans in the animation and you know gaming side of things. Um, mm -hmm. I'm actually pretty bullish on this. I, I think that the they, rabbit they, is too scary, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they, they have and they, they have some great gameplay. They have a, a huge team behind them, and, and like I said, you know this is he, quick. Do I mean you know Jake has not has no exposure to this game, guys. So you know you got to give him a little bit of of, of uh, you know leeway there. <laughs> But what I will say is that, you know, I do like what they're doing, man. And, you know, in comparison to like Blanco's, I would say they have some Blanco's feel, but like times 10 is how okay. I feel about it. Okay. Well, hey, uh, Shrapnel, even though I hadn't heard about them, I looked them up and they were already following me on Twitter. So I know they're paying attention to this space. My <laughs> pet hooligan, they're not even following me on Twitter. So not only do I not have exposure to them, but I'm not sure if they have their finger, finger on the pulse, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. well, well, I, like I just say, you know, got, yeah, this, this is this is this is this is Jake's, you know, very quick superficial rating here. Uh, you know, it, it, it's it's one of those things like you know, it, it's hard to do. You know, if someone if someone's gonna put me on the spot, I'll say the same thing. Like, hey, here's what I'll rate it if I have to rate it. But you know, I don't really know much about it, and that's that. You know, but uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it is a fun PvP game, and you know, they have a really great community around them too, like a very very uh, devoted community, which is one of the great signs, in my opinion. Uh, and mm -hmm. and and for sure that the the quality of content that's coming out them out, outside of just gameplay like promotional marketing things like that they do some really fun things because like i said they come from a, uh, like a pixar these are these are ex pixar guys and they come from a pixar yeah. background so like mm -hmm. they put some crazy fun videos out that like are you are sure featuring they're from pixar like though because pixar yeah. makes a lot cuter less scary looking well, rabbits well right i, I mean you know <laughs> i don't know i don't know exactly what what you're looking at right now but in general i mean i think that it has those, those a lot of fun elements there and, and uh, you know uh -huh. i would implore you to go check them out after the, the stream and, yeah, and, and yeah i'll them. check them out i'll check them out i'm sure they're not d tier um but but i just want to make sure no one's going to invest in this game that i know nothing about because of my recommendation <laughs> Yeah, but well, you know, we all know this is not necessarily invested. We're just talking about games, man. We're not really talking about the the monetary aspects or investments here. We're just talking no, about all my you know, A tiers. If you buy any NFTs, guaranteed gains. <laughs> there you go. You guys heard it. Guaranteed gains. Jake, no, Jake, don't, don't, uh, don't clip and, that. Don't clip. And if and if you don't, then he's going to come out of pocket, guys, and he'll and he'll, he'll reimburse you. <laughs> All right, all right. Oh, Last man. but not least. Last. Well, but not now least. my lawsuit's guaranteed. So let's yeah, let's out. go. Let's go. Get the lawyers out. Roll them out. Roll them out. All right. Last but not least, Mirandis. We say we saved one of the big ones for last year. Not not purposely. Yeah. Just kind of out rolled out. It's in the middle mm -hmm. of the alphabet. So, what mm -hmm. do you think about Mirandis? And where do you rank it? Okay. So first of all, just in case there's anyone watching, because I'm sure there's somebody out there. Who doesn't know anything about this game unlike the last game this is a game that of everyone in the entire world besides michael mccarthy 
the the master of Mirandas himself, I probably know more about this game than anyone else on earth. Uh, that's not in the team. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, maybe, maybe that's being too full of myself. Essentially, Mirandas is an MMORPG, which stands for Massive Multiplayer Online Role-Playing Game. Um, kind of think World of Warcraft. But where it's different is that in World of Warcraft, you walk through a town or city, and the whole town or city is populated by non-player characters. It's all owned by non-player characters. When you trade in the shop, you're just yep. interacting with nobody. But Mirandus is then is trying to, to give players themselves ownership of the of all of the economy, all of the economic buildings in the entire MMO. So yeah. if you go into a weapon shop and you buy a weapon, you're buying it from another player who probably bought it off of another player. Like if, if you're going and using a forge, you're renting somebody, somebody's real forge that they actually own. Yeah. Um, so they're, they're essentially just trying to create, I guess, a second country with like its own economy. So it's, it's very ambitious, but it's all inside this medieval fantasy world um and then yeah everything's going to be on chain like your weapons are going to be on chain your horse is going to be on chain um if you die like your character is on chain and it's 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 going to be a high stakes world so i'm i'm very excited about mirandus i think that it is one potential like more perfect version of what blockchain gaming can be mm -hmm. um as in, it's almost like uh, it's it's almost blockchain gaming to its furthest extent in the like total on chain version. Um, right. Whereas okay. like there's a there's another like full extent of of crypto gaming which is only cosmetic, where it's still completely like no ability to buy any power in the world. Um, like there's no pay to win at all, and like that's one ultimate version of blockchain gaming, and it's like purest gamer sense. Yes. Mirandus is like ultimate blockchain gaming in like its purest economy sense, where it's like you can hella go in with a million dollars and buy all of the best potential gear, the best horse, the best city in in the world, and you can feel super cool inside the inside the world, which a lot of gamers are gonna hate. But that is what enables every single other person who is a citizen of the world of Mirandus to to play to earn. Because that really rich person coming in and being like, I'm about to be better than all of you. I'm going to be a badass. Let me just buy all the best stuff. Guess what? He just dropped $100,000 to your local uh, weapon shop. He just dropped 50 k to, to, to the local forge owner. He just dropped, uh, he just gave 200 bucks to the guy who was out there foraging for this ore. Like okay. he, somebody's pay to win is what enables everyone else's play, uh, pay, like play to earn. So mm -hmm. it is essentially, you can think of it as just like you could travel to Singapore and try to work in that economy. You can travel to Mirandus and try to find a job in that economy. See if you can do anything that provides value to other gamers and you'll be rewarded for that monetarily because everything is on the blockchain. So Mirandus is kind of just like the, the ultimate idea of what happens if we created a new simulated version of this, of this life and put it in a digital form. And then they decided to make it medieval. And that's what Miranda says. So, like I said, I can't put anything in S tier until it's been sustainable for at least five years. Yes. So, Miranda isn't even out yet. So, it has to go A tier. Going A tier. Um, All right. We, I mean, that, no surprise there. Yeah. No surprise that we know you're yeah. a huge Miranda shill. So, you know, we knew it was yeah. going A tier. Uh, okay, big question. But selling How horses ruined everything. So, now I don't believe in it anymore. Put it in red. <laughs> <laughs> Put it in wreck, guys. He said. He said right there. The horses killed everything. Mirandus in wrecked here. You heard it. I, I, uh, live stream uh, over. We're done. We're done. <laughs> R.I.P. Mirandus. I loved you all, lasted. That's the one I'm screenshotting. Okay, but but okay. So you know, I let me. Okay, let me. I, I'm I'm very divided on Mirandus. Uh, okay. And I got a question for you, but I'm gonna ask it after I tell you how I feel about it. Sure. I have I have bought some stuff in Mirandus. I don't have I don't own a ton, uh, but here's how I'm divided. I RPGs that's my game. I've always I, I've always been an RPG gamer. I I started playing MMOs from the very beginning. If you guys know anything about the history of MMOs, Ultima Online was the OG of OGs. It created the genre, and so you know I love RPGs. I love MMOs. Um, 
I feel a lot about Moranis as the way you felt about Star Alice. I think that it's incredibly ambitious. And, you know, there, obviously there are pay to win aspects here. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, when you talk about, well, hey, you know, you got to buy, you know, a lot of these things to be able to really, er, you know, earn a, a good amount of, you know, if you really want to earn, you're going to have to pay to do that. Now, are, are you, and then also be able to, to essentially pay to go in and do things, uh, you know, like buying armor, weapons like that. I love the fact that there is an economy there. We've seen lots of MMOs where you have, you can own a shop as a person. And you're right, like inside the town. Maybe you don't own it there. And I do love that aspect. I mean, there's so many things about Mirandus that I do want to love because that's exactly what I've always wanted from an RPG as well, right? Like being mm -hmm. able to actually own the land and be able to trade it. I think that that is an amazing thing. Uh, being able to own the shops and, and all the things that, that you, know, you know, create the different towns. I love that aspect. I just am a little bit skeptical that Gala is going to be able to pull it off to the level that is going to attract a large enough crowd to sustain a massive MMO that would need to that it would need to be to really have a, a long term sustainable con, uh, you know economy. So that that's kind of how I feel about Mirandis. Um, I want to succeed because, like I said, that is one of my dreams too, man. Like like literally, when you talk about NFTs and blockchain and games, uh, an R a fantasy RPG MMO is like what it is born for. It just, mm -hmm. It's just such a huge undertaking, and I just I, I don't know, man. I, I think there's a lot yeah, of, yeah. of ways for it to fail. Now, now, now before you, before you re reply, how much have you personally invested in this game? I have invested well over $100,000. Well over $100,000. Uh, in, into Mirandus, yeah. Um, now, that said, I did flip my Town of the Duke uh, before this bear market started. Yep, the book, um, yeah. because yeah. that by itself was a one hundred thousand dollar NFT that I purchased, oh, yeah. and um, when I saw everything start going down, I assumed that potentially things like uh, like stocks with actual earnings might recover first before yeah. NFTs, which which don't have actual earnings. <laughs> so I decided to sell out of some of my very expensive NFTs to buy into stocks. Now, after I did that, stocks ended up just crashing. <laughs> literally Wait, just as much just as, as much, if yep. not more than nfts crash but you're still holding so i tesla. didn't save myself anything you're still yeah. holding the tesla i know you are but i'm still hodling tesla yeah <laughs> um but yeah so I, I sold my town of the duke for 150k that i had bought in for 100k yeah um and then That's put good. it Great in profits. tesla call options that are now yep. worth 19k um <laughs> but they don't expire until june 2024 Okay, but again, well, I, also, I also bought a good amount of Tesla stock too. I also sold my Axie um, for like that I bought for 20 ETH. I sold it for 25 ETH or something like that. Got a little gain uh, off of that. But I still do own more than $100,000 worth of Miranda's NFTs. Um, okay, so so that has to be disclosed. That is going to affect my opinion on Miranda somewhat. The fact that I'm so invested in it. That, But... I feel completely fine shitting on a ton of stuff that I own. So don't think that it's like I can't I can't say true things. Well, because as I'm you said, yeah, I mean, company. you you know, you, yeah. you talked about the recent horse sale and, and how that went yeah, and, and that was exactly. a, a, a blunder, you know, so. You so, know. so so remember the three stool, like the three legs to the stool here for a successful like crypto game. One Mirandis has with flying colors. That's the triple A team. Like McCarthy has worked on like Fable. We're, we're talking like some of the best RPGs ever. Like the team members of Mirandus built World of Warcraft. Like the team members of Mirandus have made uh, Fallout 2. Fallout 2. Like the, the AAA team behind Mirandus is, is one of those pillars that makes me super bullish on them. The other side, I'm skipping the middle one. The other side that I'm very bullish on is the economy side of it. Like I think taking blockchain gaming to its ultimate version of just a full free market on-chain economy, I think that has a ton of potential. Now that hasn't proven itself yet either, right? We haven't seen it balanced. We haven't seen it actually work. I'm sure we have a lot of problems that we're gonna have to go through before this becomes something that can actually be a free kind of more untouched economy. But the third stool, and this is, I think, what you're talking about, is like the big unknown. This yeah. is the big unknown. So I love these other two things. I love the team. I love the economy. But is the game going to be fun? Because if the game's not fun, like you said, you're not going to bring the masses of people on to have this new country that has a, yeah. a, a own economy. Like you need players for that. So well, it, this it, is it, where we really have to watch the play tests. And if you look yeah. at how much improvement has been happening 
from that very first play test, with look, which looked like absolute shit. Like, yeah. like, <laughs> like, like <laughs> horrendous market crashed after the first play test because it looked so bad. And then you compare that to this new play test, which is happening in Q1. Your mind is going to be blown. It's starting to look as good, if not better, than World of Warcraft now. It really is. Mm-hmm. And it's going to continue improving. Like this, this last trailer, if you saw the last Miranda's trailer, a lot of the, the stuff that they show in that has not been touched by their new art director at all. He hasn't even started messing with it. And like they, they keep on hiring people with these insane track records. Like they are only picking developers that literally worked on like 10 year decade best selling selling games like yeah. that is the type of talent that they're going for so we have to see though we have to see we have to see if the game's fun that's the that's the biggest if and that is the biggest if like yeah. that's the most important one of all of them well yeah i mean because like for a game like this to really be sustainable in any kind of you know medium to long term duration you know, it needs to be more than just fun. It needs to be addictive. Because and they and here here's the case for that. You know, there's a lot of games out there that are fun but have a small player base. Mm-hmm. Uh, this game needs to have a large player base. It, it could be fun and have a small player base, but then it's just not going to have that longevity. I think you know it it, it won't it, it needs to hit a certain a certain like you know level of activity before it can really you know create that mass effect. You know, and 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 that's the thing that I'm just like Star Atlas that I'm skeptical about. I'm skeptical that they can pull enough people into an, a massive sprawling MMO like this that makes it, you know, uh, you know, fun enough for people to stay in it. I play, I mean, bro, I've played tons and tons of, of RPGs, MMOs, ones that did well, ones that were, you know, indie, ones that were in between. And I've had fun in all of them, but, you know, though, there are a lot of factors that go into these types of games and they're not easy to, to keep people playing for the long term they're, at all, you know. So it's when when you go that big, it is a hard vision to to realize. Uh, I want to see it yeah. be successful because, like I said, it's it's one of those same thing with Star Atlas. It's one of those genres yeah. I love. The biggest difference, though, between Mirandus and Star Atlas is the freaking team that's building the game that's yeah, that's, has that's the difference. capability to build the game versus Star Atlas. The team that's freaking building the game isn't even a part of Star Atlas. <laughs> so right, but but, the, but, the, but, the, but what I'm saying is that that experience is is valuable and it's and it's a huge boon to to Mirandis mm-hmm. for sure, but it's not mm-hmm. a guarantee that people are going to come in mm-hmm. and play the game and it's going to have a longevity. There's lots of of yeah. AAA teams with 20 to 30 years experience on on the top games that have ever been made that make mm-hmm. games that just don't last. And You're it's right. and it happens. Mm-hmm. So I mean like it, it, you know so that's why I'm saying when we talk about like what are what are the the trials and tribulations that every game has to go through it's not just web 3 games you're competing with everything out there like you know you're not just competing with web 3 games you're competing with everything out there and there's so much going on in the gaming world uh it it's i think it's hard for any game regardless of what their team is their runway or whatever it is to like really be noticed and and be a breakout hit it's just yeah. it's a hard thing to do man uh, and there's some special sauce there i don't know what it is but damn it, Jake, if we figure it out and we bottle that shit up, we're going to sell yep. it and be billionaires. And then Elon Musk will be coming to us and say, hey, give me some of that shit you bottled, man. Hell yeah. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> All um, right. Hey, uh, Jake, man, thank you so much for joining me here to uh, rate some of the top NFT blockchain enabled games uh, on my tier list here. Uh, we had a lot of fun, man. We went, we went a little bit long, but I love the, how in-depth you went on a lot of these games. And, and you're, I really enjoy your opinion you share with us today. You know, haters are going to hate out there, but I, I do feel like Jake, you know, was was honest in his opinion. When he didn't know about a game, he, you know, quite said it. And so there's some people out there who will just be like, oh, uh, I, you know, and they'll, and they'll give you ranking without <laughs> yeah, kind of yeah. disclosing something like that. And, and so I appreciate you, man, uh, being here. And I, I hope everybody else in the chat had a lot of fun with this. Uh, I'm going to go screenshot this now and go trash you all over Twitter. So expect that and uh the incoming with shit storm that is gonna be uh this year but man no this was a lot of fun uh brother and we I, we gotta have you back on the show again and i, I definitely appreciate you so much for being here sounds good thanks for having me on it was a blast being here crypto stash i'll definitely uh definitely come back on again in the future appreciate it brother appreciate it man all right, all right guys well there you go uh we had a lot of fun here rating uh some of the top games here in nft blockchain crypto world uh, I want to know what you guys think in the comments below. If you guys had a different rating, you want to see another game in this on my next tier list, let me know. But that's all we have for today, folks. Secret and Stash, over and out.